Hey everybody, it's Mallory, Program Assistant at the Ecology School here with another Nature Nugget. So today we're going to be looking at the way water moves in a landscape through watershed modeling. So this can be done inside or outside with a range of available materials and it can really be scaled up or down to meet the needs of your learner. It's also up to you how in-depth you want to get in the science of watersheds, again depending on who your learner is and where they're at. But simply, a watershed is an area where water moves from high points to low points and collects. And that water comes in the form of rainfall or snowmelt. So we are going to be building our own landscape or our own watershed and uh, simulating and observing the movement of water through that watershed. So I'm going to be building my landscape or my watershed outside using items that I find. But again, you can do this activity inside, maybe in your sink or on a cooking sheet. You could also use pre-existing features outside, like maybe a stump or a log. So here I've piled up some rocks and branches and some pine cones that I have found to create my watershed. Um, I'm going to cover this area with tin foil, and that tin foil is going to represent topsoil. It's also going to make it easier to see the movement and collection of that water. You could use a plastic bag or really nothing at all. Again, that's up to you and what you have available to you. Before I do that, I'm going to think about what natural features might be represented in my landscape if this were a real watershed. So I imagine that some of these high points might represent mountains or hills in my landscape, and maybe those areas between them would represent valleys. Maybe some of the paths that water take down those mountains would be rivers, and maybe some of those flat areas where I predict that the water will collect might represent lakes or oceans. So before I add water to my landscape, I'm going to use food coloring and add a couple of drops to, again, some of those highest points in my landscape. Because when that rainfall does come down, those are some of the first areas that the water is going to hit. Using this food coloring is going to make it easier to see where that water travels and where it collects, but it is totally optional. So again, I'm adding to the points that are highest in my landscape maybe those hills or mountains. And before I pour my water, I'm going to make some predictions. So because I have thought a little bit about what these natural features might represent, it's easier for me to apply this landscape to the real world and make those predictions. So I think that the water will travel down my hills and mountains, and I think it will collect in some of these flat areas near the bottom because again, that water in watersheds likes to travel from high points down to low points. I will be curious to see how much water travels off in different directions, um, so we'll just have to see. So I'm going to now pour some water onto the highest points in my watershed, and we'll see what happens. So after watching what happened in the watershed, that water did travel down those hills and mountains and the largest area that it collected was right over here. That might represent a large lake in my landscape. It did take some different paths down. Those might represent rivers. So that's it. And you can take your tin foil or plastic off and shake it off and rebuild a watershed and do this activity as many times as you want. So again, this activity is great because it's so scalable depending on who your learner is. So you could start as simply as pouring a cup of water onto your driveway and watching where that water goes. Or you could build a landscape like I did using food coloring and materials that you have. It's really up to you and where your learner is at. Again, it can be done inside or outside. Inside options could maybe be done in the sink or on a cooking sheet uh, with household items. And again, you can dive as deep as you want to into the science of watersheds, but just making those predictions and watching the water move is a really valuable lesson. So I hope that you enjoy today's nature nugget and that you're able to build your own watershed.